Hello everyone, welcome to YouTube channel where we talk all about the gate exam and yes, studying CPU schedule algorithms in the operating system. We have just understood the shortest job first algorithm in the previous video. Here we are going to practice it with some of the questions. This algorithm works on the criteria of the burst time, whichever process is the smallest in the size will be scheduled first. And because it is the by default algorithm, we are understanding this works on the non preemptive mode. Okay, the preemptive mode will be explained in the later part. So let's take this question right here. We have process 1, 2, 6, the respective arrival time and the respective burst time, which we are going to schedule right away. Okay, before you, we go ahead with this video, I would like you to solve this all by yourself, get all the values of you, schedule it completely, and then come back to check what exactly how we are going to schedule it. Right now, to overcome the very first mistake, everyone, students always put P before so that you know this is the process numbering, this is not the arrival time, this is not the burst time, or any other time. All right, so the very first arrival time in the system is at time one. From time at time zero, we have no process, the first process arriving is at time one. So, from zero to one, CPU is actually doing nothing, but then it is idle. All right, so this is idle first for the CPU. At time one, we have just one process. So we just have to take this and schedule it for the whatever amount of time it needs. So one to eight till the nine burst, P6 is scheduled. Now you see everyone, this is important to understand at the time nine. By the time nine is there, all the remaining process have arrived. All the remaining. At time two, some came, three, four, five. All process are there in the system now because you have each and every one, every process in your ready queue available. So this one is done actually. Then you just have to look at the burst time. Just look at the burst time. Don't look at the arrival time because all of them have arrived. Correct? So look at the burst time. Whichever is the smaller will get the chance first. So what is the smaller one? Burst time one. So P1 gets the chance first. So P1 gets the chance first. Needs one burst, nine plus one. 10 and the P1 is done. This cutting will help you. You will realize that these processes are simply done. Now, this is also done. This is also done. Now, from 2, 4, 6, 7, which is the smallest number? 2 is the smallest number. So, let's take P2. 2 bursts. So, 10 plus 2, 12. So, this is done. This is done. All right. Next, by default, is P3 because it needs only 4 bursts. So, 4 bursts, 12 plus 4, 16. All right. So, this is done. This is done. Next is P4. Okay, I know my GAN chart is kind of flying. It's not straight in the line. So that's very really common problem with me. I cannot do the straight lines. So P4 needs how many bus? 6 bus. So 16 plus 6 makes how much? 22 bus. Alright, so this is done. This is done. Next is P5. So P5 is the last process in the flying GAN chart. And it needs 7 burst. So 22 plus 7 makes how much? It makes 29. So this is how the scheduling is done. We have P6, P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5. Followed by like this. So once we have scheduled it, let's quickly find out these time for the processes. So the completion time. Now you have to be again very careful. Second mistake to be happen. Because you are looking at the P1. So look at the P1. Don't come up here. Look at the P1. When does it complete? It completes at time 10. Simple. Now you want to P2, so completes at time 12. P3 completes at time 16. Okay, be careful. Put your finger so that you ensure that you are not doing any mistake. P4, time 22. So 22. Then P5, time 29. And the last is P6, which finishes at time 9. So this is how the completion time is there. Now quickly the turnaround time. Nothing but then completion time minus arrival time. So 10 minus 4. 6, 12 minus 5, 7, 16 minus 2, 14, 22 minus 2, 20, 29 minus 3, 26, 9 minus 1, 8. Alright? Yes. Now the waiting time, nothing but then turnaround time minus the burst time. Turnaround minus burst. So 6 minus 1, 5, 7 minus 2, 5, 14 minus 4, 10. 20 minus 6, 14, 26 minus 7, 26 minus 7, 19, 8 minus 8, 0. The only process who doesn't have to wait is process 6. 
the stall have to make their waiting okay and if you want to be co confirm that these times are right or not you can confirm from right from here if you want to pick any like if i'm picking this process process 4 how much it had to wait i'm getting 40 let me just check it out for p4 schedule at 16 p4 came at 2 so 16 minus 2 14 correct absolutely correct right right now average turnaround time and the average waiting time you can simply find out by taking the summation of all the turnaround times divided by the number of process which are fixed here similarly average waiting time you can find out summation of all the waiting times divided by six here okay uh, consider yourself as a short-term scheduler or the cp scheduler and scheduling based on the shortest job first preemptive mode and start scheduling so we have a time zero to look at the first of all the minimum time so that you can find out which process are available time zero only one process that is p1 so we have p1 and if you want you can do their annotations all right so we have a time zero p1 and it is non-preemptive so it will be given seven bursts right away so zero to seven now you see by the time seven in the ready queue all the remaining process have arrived so now we don't look at the arrival time, but we look at the burst time because all of them are available at the same time. So what is the time to look at? The burst time. So 5, 3, 1, 1 and 1. Now you see here, this is a clash. 1 and 1. Okay. So this question is important for you to understand that even if two process who are in the ready queue have the same burst time. Now how do you break this tie? You break this tie by looking at the arrival time. Okay, whichever is coming before will get the chance first because they have the same burst time. Now, somebody might think if they were coming at the same time, then as I told you in the FCFS, if they are coming at the same time, then you break the tie by the lower process ID. So here we are breaking with the arrival time. So we take up the process number four. All right, for the burst one, so seven plus one, eight. So this is done this is also done next is of course process number six six for the burst one so eight plus one nine correct correct so this is also done now after one one which is the next one the two burst two is a smaller so let's take process number five for the burst two nine plus two eleven all right next is three so process three for the burst three eleven plus three fourteen done all right next and the last process two for the first five so 14 plus 5 19 that's it all right so this is how we do the scheduling the remaining completion turnaround and waiting time the calculation for them i'm leaving it for you you practice and put the values right there if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section understand the algorithm solve the question practice more I will see you once again very soon in the next video. Until then, bye-bye. Take care.